Hey guys, uh, it's Walker Dybel, um, author of Buy Then Build, creator of the Acquisition Lab. I wanted to jump in and um, two things are going on right now. One, and they're sort of parallel. One is um, I'm brokering a deal for someone who is selling their business. And secondly, um, I decided to list uh, my house for sale by owner and um, am and, and exploring my, my first path through um, trying to be a real estate agent with my own property. And there's some interesting sort of parallels forming. And I, and I, like, I, I didn't quite realize that these dots were connecting until I sat down just now. And the, the, the thing is, is we always want to know as, as buyers, right? Like what can we do to sort of like stand out, um, as the buyer of choice to sellers. Okay. And so on the one hand, I'm helping a seller sell his business. On the other, um, I'm looking to sell my own house and, uh, I, the story on the business is that uh, uh, we went to market and um, pretty quickly we had a lot of interest and I think there was roughly four offers that came in um, we're kind of right on top of each other and the thing is is that the seller ended up deciding to go with um, the person who did not have the highest offer okay and usually as buyers, this is what we're thinking. We're like, hey, you know, I probably need to go in with the highest offer and all, all the rest of it. Um, however, um, well, hold on. What, what, what I want to say is he didn't go with the person with the, with the highest offer. It was also the buyer that I recommended. Um, and it was also uh, the buyer that the lender on the deal uh, recommended. Um, although he didn't have as much of an opinion because, you know, he doesn't care who he's going to finance. But, but the thing was, it was, it was kind of a unanimous decision. And it's interesting to think about why. As I go to sell my house, um, this, this story is not done yet. Uh, we did have five showings today, um, two yesterday. Offers are starting to come in. Um, I should say I have one offer in hand. Uh, it's over asking. I'm probably not going to accept it. Um, and I think that I'm going to get an offer from someone else who's much more favorable. I don't know if they will match it, exceed it, or come in under. The point is, if they came in under, I would be more interested in selling it to that person than selling it to this this uh, other person who who came at me with a with a with a very good offer over over asking price. Let's go back to the business for brokering. Why? What are the things? Well, you know, a lot of times I will tell buyers that you know what it is that you bring to the table in terms of selling yourself is confidence and speed to closing. Okay, that was not absent in this deal. Okay. Um, we talked to a lot of buyers and some of them are very timid. Some of them are a little like, I'm not sure what I don't know, all the other things. But the thing is, is that the per this particular individual, um, she came to the table with kind of like the perfect background, um, you know, the, sort of the perfect resume, um, understood the nuances of the business, understood the risks of the business, and they didn't really phase her, right? Like she was still comfortable with what those risks were and that she was the right person to sort of tackle them. Kind of that growth mindset that we talk about in chapter three, I think, of Buy Them Built. And so, um, you know, being comfortable with the challenge and knowing that she's the one that cr can create value there. Here's the thing that really sold me, it's not my business, um, is that she was the person that uniquely was qualified to capitalize on the unique growth opportunities that the business actually had. That growth opportunity, okay, the big one anyway, is there for everybody. Um, anyone who bought the company, who was paying attention to the business, would have been able to look at the business and understand the, the growth opportunity, okay? Um, any one of them could have gone after it, okay? Um, all, many of them were good buyers, okay? There were good buyers in the mix. And some, in fact, some were sort of shocked, like, what else can I do? And the truth is, is like, you know, in the future, what can I do? And the truth is, is that it was just this unique situation, had a unique growth opportunity, and a person came uh, in with, a, with an offer that was actually the worst offer. Um, um, she did need to clean her offer up and sort of fix it back to sort of market, but she did not need to match the highest offer, okay? Um, and so, um, uh, just to drill down there, I guess, for, as a side note, uh, it was not full cash at closing. There was, you know, a hold back, a little earn out, all the rest of it. And, um, you know, all the others were, were sort of full cash at closing, if, if, and, and almost all of them were at or over, all of them were at or over asking price, okay? So, so she did need to sort of, you know, tighten up her offer. Uh, clean it up anyway. Um, 
But, um, you know, and the same is true, you know, here when I go to sell my house, um, I've got this offer, but um, the, the gentleman who made this over asking price offer is not in town, has never seen the house, um, and is not able to fly in uh, to look at it during the time that we're hoping to sell it. And so I'm just supposed to accept this over asking price offer without anyone meeting this person and without this person putting eyes on the house that they're buying, which happens. Uh, my neighbors bought one just like that. But um, the truth is, is that the odds of them, what, you know, what's the confidence and speed that I can have to closing? Pretty low because, you know, they're going to want to, you know, okay, so you put in this whatever hot water eater in 2017, what's the warranty? Like I've never seen it before. Can I, you know, all these, take a picture? I don't know. So it feels like there's going to be a lot of um, risk that I have as a seller in terms of someone who runs me through a heavy diligence pro process and then doesn't actually close because they're not necessarily in love with the house. You know, they haven't seen, say, these this arched doorway, the you know the the the, the sort of architectural uh, beauty of the house. They haven't seen it, right? So what how, you know, there's no emotional connection. There's no um, you know, and this this family that wants to move in here will heavily utilize the neighborhood. They've got kids that can go to the school over here. They've got just the right number of, of kids for the bedrooms that we have. Um, this sounds, you know, maybe weird, but they, they're a great cultural fit for the neighborhood. Like, they, like they're just, you know, they're, they're, um, they're gonna, I already know who they're gonna be friends with and how they're gonna be uh, meld and received by the, by the neighbors. And they're just a cultural fit that can maximize the utility of this house and the, the surrounding um, neighborhood and schools and stuff. Um, whereas not all of the buyers that have come through today um, really match that profile. Some of them are, you know, single guys that sort of like want a bachelor pad with a pool and, you know, but like there's gonna be empty rooms. And so it's like, great, but like, is this really what, what you want? Cause you're not gonna be able to maximize this. Back to the business, this buyer is the person because she's gonna be able to get in there and maximize the business for what it is. She's gonna be able to be welcomed into the community because she's got the right background. She's gonna be able to be welcomed by the supplier. She's gonna be able to um, leverage the skill sets that she has to take that business to the next level. Um, I'm blessed to know that um, I helped her on the buy side um, in terms of, um, uh, understanding, you know, helping her understand where her ex expertise lies, understanding the business model of buying businesses and being able to identify the one that um, got her to uh, uh, where she wants to go. So um, if you are interested uh, in acquiring a business in, in the next uh, six to 24 months, consider the acquisition lab. When we started the acquisition lab, um, no one was talking about buying existing companies. Uh, no one had um, um, any programs like this. And even though that was true, um, I based uh, the business model of the acquisition lab on the Harvard, on the Y Combinator, on the Hack Reactor, on the Codesmith, on all of the, the top performing um, accelerators in their space. Um, we focused on developing world-class uh, curriculum, um, developing a, a, a team, a bench of, of um, acquisition coaches to work with uh, our different um, uh, buyers. It's a do it with you buy side advisory model. It's not the Walker Dival show. We've got, you know, I think last week I paid six or seven different coaches that are working with our members um, just that week. And uh, from there, we of course we go to into supplier network and, and um, you know, resources and tools and all, and, and all the rest of it. And I think that the, the little thing that I didn't understand was I knew that we wanted to vet because I knew that we wanted a community of people where every single last person in the community could actually execute. And it wasn't about size, it was about quality. Um, I didn't understand uh, the level of impact that um, the community would have on designing the acquisition lab. Um, the, the, the community is the thing that um, keeps me engaged because I know that every single person in there is able to close on a business. Um, we're just now over 500 members. Um, you know, we've closed over 200 million uh, in transactions. Um, we've got over 100 uh, transactions that, that we know of. I think that there's a lot that we actually don't that no one reported. Um, but it's really satisfying to know that we can create this sort of do it with you buy side advisory model and help people for less than the cost of, of two months of a buy-side advisor, get really clear on all of the things 
that really hang up most buyers and um, help get them to their goals so that they too can have a business to, to lead and run and operate and provide value and all these other things. So um, look, I guess this was a sales pitch for the acquisition lab. It was, it was not intended to be that, but, um, but you know, the point is, is it's, a, it's a great community. Um, it's great content and we're, we're looking to help people there. So that is one of the things we do. Um, thanks so much. See you on the inside.